Good morning, everybody. Kevin Schoon here from MyBottomDollar.com, a site dedicated to providing wealth building strategies as well as tips regarding personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to click the like button, subscribe. If you got any uh, constructive criticism or any uh, opinion about the uh, video, let me know. I'm always always open ears, and I like to see how I can get better. Uh, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be any questions. I'll be happy to answer. Um, today, I just want to talk about the difference between value investing and income investing. I feel like it's uh, necessary so people can uh, decide on how they want to invest. One's geared more towards a younger demographic with higher risk tolerance, while the other is more towards an older demographic with lower risk tolerance. And uh, time plays a factor in both. I'll start with income investing first. Um, income investing is literally what it sounds like. It's investing for the purpose of creating another stream of income. This income is usually in the form of stock dividend and or bond payments. For stock dividends, the average dividend rate is usually two to three percent, while the bond payments is usually based on obviously the interest rate on the bond. People who usually people who are income investors are usually those that are getting ready to retire, have retire, and just need you know a little bit of money to pay their uh, living expenses or need continuous money to pay their living expenses while they're not working. Uh, people who have like low risk tolerance, meaning that, you know, they don't have a lot of money to lose, but they still want to invest. So there's, there's many reasons why people do income investing. I mean, sometimes they just want to, you know, create, uh, let's say you want to create a college fund for your kids. The, the payment from the dividends you can save or constantly they'll constantly come in. So you can just put them into a savings account. And by the time your kid gets ready to go to college, they'll already have, you know, enough money to already start their college career. So, you know, good, good, good examples of, div, of income, uh, good income investments are things like, you know, obviously being stock, like I said, stock dividends. So that means like Ford, McDonald's, uh, you know, John Deere, AT&T, companies like that that have, you know, been around forever and don't really plan on going anywhere because they're just a, such a staple, you know, in business. So they, they have a continuous, you know, dividend payment. One thing to watch out for, though, with dividend payments is you don't want to invest in a company that just because it pays in a high dividend, right? There's companies out there that may pay 6% dividend rates, but the, the bad the, uh, thing to watch out for is, though, let's say, for example, a, a, a circumstance like, you know, the 2008 market crash, right? There, there, that kind of high of a dividend is not sustainable over a long period of time. So they will have to be forced to cut your dividend down until so that way it's not eating away one at their profit margins and that they're not bleeding money. So. That could affect you, let's say, if you're a retiree and, you know, you have, you know, $1,000 or $500,000 in dividends, but all of a sudden you're getting $20,000, $30,000 in dividend payments. Now it's been reduced to about $10,000, $15,000, you know, so that might not be enough to cover your living expenses. So that's something to watch out for when investing. I stated before, the average is usually around 2 to 3%. That's because that's sustainable over time. And the companies that I mentioned earlier are ones that have been known to you know, maintain that, those dividend payments. So that's just one thing to uh, look out for. Make sure that you're not investing in, you know, just because it has a high dividend rate. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is value investing. Value investing got its term from, you know, investors like Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham, right? I believe Benjamin Graham is the one who actually coined the term, but pretty much value investing is being able is, is investing in stocks that their stock price doesn't reflect their the business, meaning that you're getting a bargain price on a stock that should be worth more. Right. It's a bargain price on a stock that should be worth more. For example, Facebook, when it first came out, took a lot of heat because nobody knew how much how it was going to make money because they were trying to stay away from ads. But when they went public, their share price was about 10. You could get the share price for about $10 after the IPO was settled, right? The share price dropped to $10. Now, a person who studied, probably studied the financials, probably, you know, studied the management, 
studied the culture of where social media was going and understood trends, probably was able to see that Facebook was going to be around for a while because there wasn't many social media platforms that could compete with it because it was just growing too exponentially and they were kind of innovators in what they were doing. So if you bought that stock for $10, you've, and today, that was in like 2012. So that was five years ago. You bought that stock for $10. Right now, that stock price is $151. So you can imagine the capital gains on that, or the paper gains rather, from a person who bought that stock at $10. That's an idea of a value stock, being able to see the direction of the business based on you know the, the actual business, not the product, the business, meaning how it's ran, it's how long it's been doing, how well it's been doing, and it's performance in comparison to other people. You're right. For example, I use uh, an example that I, uh, that I like to use a lot because it was like one of my first victories when it came to uh, buying stocks. It was a stock called Celsius Holdings. Now, it was, it was first originally traded as a penny stock on the uh, over-the-counter market, right? And I bought the stock for 75 cents. Now, I believed in the product because the product was something that wasn't being done. So when I invested in the stock, it shot up. And when I seen people like, you know, Russell Simmons and, you know, various other people investing in the company, I felt like it had to be legit. Studying it, they were making money. What they were doing, they were doing everything necessary to make money. So to me, that seemed like a solid company. When I, I bought about 500 shares of it, and the stock shot up to $4. So yeah, I made a nice pretty penny off of that. And I was able to, you know, take care of some immediate family emergencies because, you know, I was able to capitalize on the value of that stock. It was trading on the over-the-counter market just because it was a new stock and didn't have many investors publicly. But once it now, this, now it's trading on the NASDAQ. But that's neither here nor there. But regardless of the point, I was able to see the value in it and I was able to capitalize. Those are kind of those are what you those are ways to uh, that that is an example of a value stock. But the value stocks are for long term holding, so you can't expect to see the value right away. You can't expect to see the gains right away, rather. But because you have you have vested interest in the business and you can see the future, or you have confidence in the future, you take a chance on that stock and hope to gain from that later on in the future. People who are value investors, when they believe in a stock, usually don't go with the herd mentality. You know, the common the common knowledge about stocks or the common um, quote with stocks is, you know, you buy low, sell high. But value investors do the opposite. If they be really believe in a stock, if they really believe in a stock, when a stock goes low, they buy more. When the stock goes high, they buy more. They don't just look to sell the stock for a complete capital gain. They're looking to be able to benefit to the point where that their profit, their, their margin of safety is covered. Like, you know, so if you buy a stock for five dollars and you could see the stock potentially becoming a twelve dollars, it doesn't matter if that stock goes up to seven, that stock goes down to three, if that stock goes up to six. You're looking to get as close to that $12 mark because you believe in that stock. So you hold on to it until the point where you feel like you're close enough to your goal and you're willing to sell it. That's an idea of a, a, a value stock. And that's another thing to keep in mind. You're not investing in the products. You're investing in the business. Is the company making money? Is the, is the, is the product trendy or is it going to last a long time? Is there a lot of competition for the product? Those are things to consider, or are there other like it that are doing better or you can see doing better? Because that will also affect the stock price. Where, where is the edge that you see with that company that gives you the advantage, right? That you see the value that's worth holding on to, that people that might not have caught it yet, so they're starting to, uh, so you're able to get in on the ground floor. That is the idea of value investing. So, like I said, if you like this video, please subscribe, like it, leave comments. I'm always open to constructive criticism. Let me know how I can better, how I can help you. 
My name is Kevin Schoon. This is MyBottomDollar.com. If you want to visit my blog, the link is in the description. Thanks.